What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen. And in this video, what I want to do is I want to dive into detail about my tournament setup for my Bonafide. I, I honestly don't really care how long this video is going to be. I want to get down into the dirty as to what and what I have on here and why it's where it is and how it's set up. It's pretty, it's a pretty unique rig. Um, what's funny is I used to make fun of people who over rigged their kayak. I think I've now joined them, so I can't make fun of them anymore. But first of all, before we get started, I've got a debt to pay back. I lost a bet to Edwin Evers last fall, and I told him, well, the, the, I lost a bet, and we agreed that if we, if we, whoever lost had to wear the other person's hat. So, I guess now that Georgia won the national championship, I don't feel so bad about wearing this thing. So in this video, we're gonna be seeing the OU hat compliments of Edwin Evers. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, first of all, I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna move this over here just to, just for because I'm proud of my dogs. Uh, all right, so up front, we have the MotorGuide XI3 trolling motor. People think I'm crazy because I have a motor on my kayak, but it is mounted to a bona fide mounting plate. Bonafide kayaks makes a mounting plate, but last year I had my motor to, mounted to an one objective mounting plate, which worked great. I ran it into stumps going full speed and it never gave me issues, but I was always worried about how it was mounted because it was mounted directly into the plastic with no no uh, washers and bolts and nuts. It was it just wasn't as stable as, or wasn't as hard mounted as this one is. And I feel more comfortable trailering this one from place to place than I did the other the other one. And that was the only difference. You know, if I, if I had the one objective mount, I would take the motor off when I trailered and put it in the back of the truck. No big deal. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this thing off and I'm gonna show you, actually, first of all, come right over here. And the one issue with the, uh, with the troll motor is being able to deploy it, being able to push this button down because it's designed to be pushed down with your foot but you're sitting way back there. And I designed this little deal. Actually, I stole it off of somebody and I can't remember the guy, it's in another video. But anyway, I designed this to be able to pull it down and I'm gonna take the motor off and show you guys the guts of this system real quick. down on the ground okay so the guts this rope goes like this let me get these rods out of the way so I don't break them all right now this rope goes through here all the way to a knob that I have coming out right here now all these little hardware parts come out of the bona fide rudder kit is what they come out of Okay, so you pull this and it pulls the button down. The only problem is but once you pull it, it has no way of retracting back. So I took a large piece of bungee cord, okay? It is zip tied right here, un behind here in a knot. Okay, and then I also used a lark's head knot and a zip tie right here on this end. And so when you pull it and it pulls the, the, the pedal down, it'll also release some slack so that pedal can pop back up. So that's why, that's just like a spring, it just, a bungee cord works better. The last one I did had a thin bungee cord that wasn't enough. And so that thick bungee cord is really what, what makes this whole thing work and work easily without any issues. So that's that setup. Now, before we could dive into what you see right here, down in the bottom, this is another one objective thing that I got from them. This is a keel guard from one objective. And what it does, you can see how it's already scratched up, is I can pull up on a boat ramp and not worry about scratching the hole in my boat, which I really like. Now, one of the questions I might get is how was that motor mounted and why was it so easy to, to, to remove? This is the motor guide um, quick release mount that is mounted to the plate, to the, to the bona fide plate. It also mounts to the one objective plate. That's basically what that is. It just, it's two pieces that come together and that this little U-bolt or this little bracket slides right in and locks everything in place. And so that's all that is. 
All right, something I forgot to mention at the beginning, and before we go any further, most of the stuff on my kayak is sponsor related, except for my electronics. It's the only thing on here that is, is not part of a sponsorship deal. So just wanted to get that out front and ahead of you guys so you understand that all of this stuff in here, of course the wiring and stuff I bought myself, but it's all sponsor related. All right, so let's dive into the, into the guts. All right, so let's dive into the inside. First of all, the plug. Motor Guide recommends this one. It's the Marenko plug. Um, I'm not sure what the model is. I'll leave the link, the, uh, the link in the description to all of this stuff so you'll be able to see what plug that is, which is funny because they don't even produce that one, but that's the one they recommend because the old two-prong one we were overheating. Now, all the wiring in here. For the 55-pound thrust troll motor, they say eight gauge or larger. So I've got six gauge wire in here. Everywhere in here that runs the trolling motor is six gauge. That's That way that if I ever decide to go to a 24 volt system, I'll have the right wiring in here and it won't overheat. Now, if I do go to a 24 volt, and I may go ahead and do this, I've got to change this fuse right here. This is this fuse is a little too small for, um, for a 24, actually quite a bit too small, and it might be a little too small for the 55 that I got on there. So that's gonna change. All right, so a lot of people ask about this switch right here, actually this whole panel. It's something we had done at Westbrook Supply Company, my paddle shop, dude, and I'll leave a link to them down there. They can rig just about anything you need. Uh, Fletch has been rigging longer than anybody else in the industry, and he can make it happen. But anyway, this is a dual battery switch. And the reason I have a dual battery switch is because I want it out, a little bit of redundancy if I've got a battery that dies or something like that. So when I'm running a long ways, I have a 60 amp up front, I have a 100 amp in the back, and I can either run them both at the same time for 160 amp hours of, of power, or I can run one up front and one in the back. I can, I can change my weight around. I can put the 60 or the 100 or whatever, and I'll be able to do that without having to rewire anything. So it's wired for two batteries, most of the time, I'm just going to have one battery somewhere on the boat, but I wanted to be able to put them where I needed to to distribute the weight properly because I am almost maxed out with this boat. Okay, if you come back in here, we got two Dakota Lithium 23 amp hour batteries. These run all of my electronics, and I run my electronics through the Yak Power uh, system. And what that does is it has all of these wires that run all the way around the boat, and it po has power, uh, power plugs all over my boat to run my fish finders and my cameras and, and everything. And so to do that, you know, to run two fish finders, a live scope module, um, and what else? And all my cameras, I need enough power. 23 amp isn't big enough. 54 is, but that battery's too tall. It fits, it's too high up in here, so it doesn't, it just doesn't fit in this box. So I went with two 23s running parallel. And uh, I, the Yak Power box is the, the hard mount. It's not the, the uh, Bluetooth one. I just have fewer issues with this one than I do with the Bluetooth one. And that's why I went with that. All right, so let's close this up and go a little further back, okay? This I'm pretty happy about. This is the, a brand new Bending Branches Angler Pro in the copperhead color. I just think it looks awesome. Uh, but anyway, always have a paddle. I don't care how many motors you have on the boat, how much battery you have, something can always go wrong. In there right, Jordan, national championship. Yeah. Last day, end of time. I started to head back to the boat ramp. I had about three and a half miles to go. Stop laughing at me. I had about three and a half miles to go and the battery went woo, done because I had run all over that lake that day. And so, which means I ran about 15 miles. And so that battery was done, and so I had to paddle. Luckily, I had a 15 mile an hour tailwind, but I called Jordan and said, hey, I'm gonna be a little late. <laughs> Grabbed the paddle and took off. So you always need a good paddle, and I always recommend getting a light paddle, because typically when you have motors and something goes wrong, your boat isn't lightweight and isn't easy to paddle. So you wanna have a very good paddle that you can, you know, that doesn't hurt you while you, when you're paddling back. And you're also like me. If you're like me, you're a long ways away from the, from the ramp. All right. All right, so moving on back, let's drop down here and I'm gonna show you some of the things I've got right here. This right here is basically my battery tester. It lets me know how much battery I've left in my fish finder batteries. I'm not, because of what, how I have my, my motor batteries set up, I'm not too worried about those. Then I've got my Yak Power uh, buttons or switches and that turns it on and then I can run my fish finders, uh, my bow mounted uh, lights for, for when I'm running at night or running early in the morning. And then my, uh, 
my two cameras is what all that is. Okay, over here, this is all this all got installed at Westbrook. I got three switches. These two run my fish finders, and this is my uh, my plugs for my cameras, my USB plugs, and also to charge my phone. And so that's really, really handy, and I love having it right there, and it just runs straight to that, that battery, so I don't have to carry anything else. Just, you know, if my trip phone dies during the middle of the tournament, all I gotta do is plug it up. So coming on back, one thing that you may notice is I have all my wires covered up, covered up, and these are something that's made at TRC rod covers. These are custom wire covers. And the reason they sell them custom is because, like this one, this is my old one. Notice it's not long enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a hold of them and I'm gonna order, you know, get a measurement of how long I need it and I'm gonna order one that's gonna cover the entire wire. But this is what you get, different colors. And it's basically their rod covers that are cut down and, and these ends, and it just makes everything look clean and covers up wires. Because if this one wasn't on here, you can see all of the junk that's this covers it up and all this can get hung on uh, on your rods and stuff so i just kind of have it tucked away and it just makes everything look really clean all right so my fish finders these are both garments uh 93 sbs i think is what they are they're nine inch um this one runs down imaging mapping regular sonar and stuff like that and this one right here is only for live scope and live scope is now. It was the future a couple of years ago. It is the now. If you're not using live scope, and like I said, this is not a sponsorship thing. I bought these. But if you're not using live scope, somebody's beating you with it. And so that's why I have it on the on the kayak. And another thing is, you know, you got these guys that, well, why don't you just get a bass boat? I'm gonna give you the short answer to that one. If you ask me, why don't you just get a bass boat? The reason is you can't fish kayak tournaments out of a bass boat or John boat or anything else like that. You only can fish kayak tournaments out of a, out of a kayak. And that's why I rig mine out. And why, why not rig it like a full grown professional bass boat if you're fishing these tournaments for thousands of dollars? I don't know, that's what I did. All right, so if you look at how my, my fish finders are mounted, now with a kayak, everything is custom done. Everything you've got to do according to, you know, a kayak does not come rigged like this, but a bona fide has a dry pod, okay? And this dry pod, let me take some wires off and unplug some stuff. When it comes out, there's your transducer for those who haven't seen this before. So everything is right here. All I got to do is drop this sucker in, plug it in and it's ready to go. And so the way I've custom mounted is I've got a 12 inch gear track mounted right here. Um, and I got it long like this to give me that horizontal, um, horizontal stability because these things are pretty heavy and, and having a small mount just didn't work. So I mounted it all the way to here. And plus I can slide it back and forth. I just like my fish finders between my knees. And you open it up, you got a little bit of dry storage for batteries and extra stuff and Sharpies, and I usually have turn, tourney tags. But the one thing I hate about fish finders these days is they're not made for kayaks. And so I got transducer wire wrapped all the way around in here and it just gets in the way. Maybe one day fish finder companies, hey Lawrence, think about it, <laughs> will have an eight, eight inch or an eight foot wire instead of a 20 some or 18 foot wire. Okay, all right, so we're going to talk about the live scope here in just a minute and how I have all that mounted up. But from here, from here back is my work area. And one thing that you've got to understand when you're, when you're figuring out where things go and how things work in a kayak is everything has its place and everybody is different. I may have something in a spot that you don't want it in, but everything is, it works for me. The most important thing is, is that find a spot for everything and keep the everything, keep those things in their spots. When you're done using them, put them back or your front, the front of you gets so cluttered, you cook a fish and you just have nothing but issues trying to get that fish in the boat. So something, everything has its place, but. All right, so as you look around the boat, you'll notice that there's a lot of these little things right here. This is the base to everything that's on my kayak. And that's a, that's a lock and load mounting base. And it fits into these gear tracks. I'll slide this one in real quick and it tightens down and you can put it anywhere on any of the gear tracks on the Bonafide and you can buy aftermarket gear tracks to put it on whatever kayak that you have. And that's the base of everything. Rod holders, the, uh, the Yak Attack, um, what are these, these are universal fish finder mounts. Everything is, that's the base that it goes on and it allows me to move things around and mount things wherever I want to mount them. So we're gonna move on back. We have a Yak Attack cup holder 
And this is a one objective uh, cup caddy is I think that's what they call it. And you'll see you, I put my I put my uh, my hooks in there. My pliers go in here. It just makes everything work because what the cup caddy is or what the cup holder is, it's just a, it's a place where I drop my tackle and drop things that, you know, I don't want to fall out of the scupper hole, soft plastics, chatter baits, everything that during the day, just what collects the stuff I use during the day. And that's why that, that cup holder is right there. I don't use it for a cup holder ever. I think a cup holder on a boat is absolutely useless because um, <laughs> I use a cool or a, a, a Yeti uh, tumbler instead. Anyway, moving on back, fish grips. This is actually a custom Georgia Bulldog fish grip. The Georgia G's almost worn off that they made me as a gift years and years ago, but I always use a fish grip. I've, I've trusted it and never lost a big fish on it. Um, can't say that much for other things and other ones in the industry, but the fish grip is what I use to, to, uh, to hold my fish in the water while I'm getting stuff ready to take pictures. And so all you do is you close it down and you take this elastic wrap and you wrap it around and lock it in and it, and it just stays tight and the fish don't get off they can't torque themselves off like i said even my 10 pound 12 ounce uh, personal best stayed on one of these for about 15 minutes while we were waiting on a camera crew totally trust them all right all right so just for i guess for a uh, the, because it's a kayak video and i always emphasize this always wear your pfd and this is what i use i use an nrs chinook and it holds all of my remotes, my camera, or my phones, and everything else. It's got plenty of pockets, plenty of flotation. It's comfortable, and I can wear it all day long, even in the hot heat of the summer. So the Chinook, I've had it for years and years and years. Then my kayak cushion. They were really cool and put, a, put my logo on it, which I absolutely love. This one's already seen a lot of use. Um, and it just makes things, it brings my butt up a little bit higher, so I feel like I'm sitting higher in the kayak. And it also is really comfortable to sit in all day long. And I put a lot of seat time in these boats. You see all the Florida dust on this thing. All right, coming on underneath here, you got a, a, a junk drawer. And this is the bona fide junk drawer cover. I do not fish with this in the boat. I, this is mainly for trailering to keep stuff from flying out while I trailer. So I just leave the, the junk drawer in there. So I take this off, I put it in the back of the truck when I'm out fishing, but it's pretty nice. I mean, if you want to fish it, you use it fishing. If you don't have a belly that gets in the way like me, you can, you know, it's got pockets. You can put stuff in, put soft plastic and stuff like that. Like I said, I just use it as a cover. Next is my catch board. Uh, you got to have one of these for every KBF tournament. This one just happens to be a little bit customized. It's got my logo or my, my catchphrase, teaching the world to fish. It's got my YouTube channel my logo, name, everything else. I just think that was pretty cool with them to do for me. Um, and it, you know, it, it's not that much more expensive to get one that's custom done. And it also just kind of brands it, that kind of stuff. Um, all right, coming on back, this is what my, the camera mount that I run during my tournaments. I only run one behind me um, and it is a Boomstick Pro. And I'll have a GoPro up, up top, I'll have a wire. And you'll see this, I'm do, gonna do a video about how, about my camera mounts and stuff like that here after I'm done with this one. but. It comes down and I get a USB plug right here and I'll show that in that next video. So, uh, and it just plugs in and powers all day long. Now, coming on back, we got Omega rod holders, which are my bread and butter. I love them because they easily lock down and can hold my rods. This is the new 13 Fishing Blackout, by the way, just barely coming out on the market in the Defy Black. These are inexpensive, totally inexpensive, and the reels too. Um, anyway, I got on a tangent. I can hold eight rods back or nine rods back here okay comfortably without getting tangled and everything else so the way i've got it set up i'll talk about in a minute total of 10 rods that i like to run nine up in the back and i'll have one laying in front of me for a maximum amount of rods rarely do i ever have 10 rods on the boat i have them side by side and you'll notice jordan come around here and show the back now in the army we say a lot of talk a lot about dress right dress and if you look directly down the center line of the boat you got these rods that come straight up and these rods that come straight out just like that. And there is a reason for that, okay? I don't, it doesn't have to look pretty. The biggest reason is, is that leverage landing net needs to be completely clear of everything. You don't want it to get snagged on anything. So I have the rods angled out like that. So if there's a crankbait right there, it's less likely to have that net snag on that crankbait and not be able to get it out for a fish. So that's the reason why they're lined up like this. These rod tubes right here on the black pack are, I drilled the holes and mounted them at this angle and they're 
they're the only ones that are tethered in because if you bump a, a tree or something with these, nine times out of 10, they're gonna come falling out if you don't have them tethered. The black pack itself, these are new canoe hinges. They're not cheap, but they're worth their weight in gold for the black pack. And that's the reason is it's not floppy. They come right open. And I have, this is how I run my tackle, is I have all of these Plano edge boxes, the 3600 boxes, and these are what go in this box. And I, these are the ones I had for, for uh, Florida, lipless punch, swim, swim jigs, frogs. And they come out and they go in and, and they, Basically, there's not all my tackle. It's just what I need for that day of fishing and all the rest of my tackle is in the back of my truck and I'm able to load and unload what I need and put them in those 3,600 boxes. My JJ's Magic is in there. But one thing you're gonna, a lot of these guys who have dealt with the Black Pack are gonna say, what did you do to make it to where they will fit 3,700 boxes? The larger ones. And I'm gonna show you. When you first get your Black Pack, take the two top bar, top parts, right here and right here, okay? match them up, tape them together real good, and then mark off a half an inch back, or at least a half an inch back, and then just kind of make it, I, I put angles right here, but you want to cut from the middle of one screw to the middle of other, the other screw, a half an inch back on both of those. And if you have them taped together, you can do them at the same time and they come out looking really, really clean. And what that does is it makes it to where you can easily put 3,700 boxes in and take them out and it really doesn't affect anything. So that's what I did to customize that. All right, so I've got the KVD uh, speed, speed pouches or speed bags, I think that's what they call them. That's what I keep my soft plastics in. I usually have one big one and a small one that's full of trailers for chatterbaits and things like that, chatterbaits and jigs. But it mounts right there, or it stays right there, and it kind of stays out of the way and, 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 uh, and real easy to get to. Now, the leverage landing net. Okay, a lot of people call this that have watched me net fish call this my, my ninja net. And I can get this thing out. I literally wait till the last possible second. I don't even reach back for it till that fish is coming to the boat and it's ready to go in the net. And I pull the rod up and I lean back and I grab the net and I flip it open and it's ready. And I can do that in 0.7 seconds. And if my editor does what he's supposed to, you just watched a video about it uh, as I was talking. But. Uh, <laughs> I'm making fun of Jordan right now. <laughs> so the leverage landing net is that I love this thing. And I practice like a, like a baseball player practices a swing. I practice getting it out so I, there's never any issue because this was a major issue to begin with. And, and my thought behind having it behind my left shoulder is my rod is almost always in my left hand. It's when I'm bringing a fish in and it's out of the way and it causes me to lean back a little bit. I don't like to put my net way out in front of me and just lay it like a lot of, a lot of guys in Hobies and stuff will lay it out in front of them. What that causes is that if you're heading towards the fish anyway, while you're fighting the fish, and you lean forward to grab your net off the front of your kayak, you bow to that fish and you give him slack, and you'll lose a lot more fish by having it out in front of you, at least I would. Now, Having it behind me sitting right here, it's completely out of the way. And when I need to grab it, it causes me to lean back a little bit, which I main, so I maintain tension on the fish and it's just an easy snap and it's ready to go. And so that's my, my ninja net, my leverage landing net from Yak Attack. It goes in a Zuka tube or a Zuka two rod holder. And it is, this is upside down. Typically your Zuka would be flipped over. I have it upside down or I have it in the bait caster mode. Spinning rod on this side, you can put a bait caster in on this side, but it has a V cut into it that locks that arm piece in. So it's always in the same spot and I never have to worry about it being rotated or anything else. It's always sitting right there. I don't even have to look back much. I need to see it out of the corner of my eye, reach back and grab it and net the fish. That is critical for me. I have caught so many fish where I, or I've netted so many fish where the fish landed in the net and the lure was going somewhere else. And I've been able to get those net, those fish in the boat because of that net and because of the way I have it set up. Now let's dive into my live scope. All right. So this little Jerry rig pole right here, <laughs> this is a conglomeration of a bunch of yak attack parts. First of all, this is the pole from the uh, from the camera mount same pole and I took it all apart and it's basically it's upside down when it goes in the water like this 
So I've got, a trans, got the transducer mount. Now the problem was is the bracket that came with the, the Garmin transducer, it was too big for the pole. So I cut a piece of the foam off, slid it down the pole, and it works perfectly. It gives me a little bit of shock absorption. It's tight. It doesn't move. It's just, it, it's the spacer underneath there and it really does work great, at least for now until it, it dry rots and wears out. Then I've got the, the, the uh, cable um, electrical taped. And this is what they recommend you do instead of zip ties. For some reason, you get a better signal with using electrical tape and I wasn't gonna question the experts. Now, this is an old Yak Attack pole mount. They still make these. They, sell, they actually go on the crossbars that, uh, that Yak Attack has. But that's what that is and that allows me to turn the transducer by hand. So right here, I've got the regular four inch extension from the lock and load mount with the base and it, and it connects on the other side just like this on the lock and load base is basically what it does. And I have these on this side so I can switch it back and forth depending on which hand is free. So it mounts just like that and it locks down. You come up to the top and I added another four inch extension arm and this is the handle. And it tells me which direction that the transducer is facing. So if it's facing this way, matter of fact, let's do it like, well, it doesn't really matter. But I know which direction the transducer is facing by which direction it's pointing, the, uh, the, the, um, the handle is pointing. All right, so let me take, and I'm gonna show you how it mounts on the other side and show you how it's stored on the other side, okay? Come around to this side, pull the net. All right, so this drops in here just like this. And the bungee strap locks it in. And then the pole, this is a Yak Attack double header. And it fits perfectly just like this. And I don't even use the straps. I just, they have bungee straps that come with them. I took the bungee straps off. And it sits just like that, and that's how it rides. Okay, and then when I want to use it, I pick it up. And I don't drop it right here. I drop it right there, and that's perfect for where my hand is. So that's mainly where it rides on. This right here is a one objective um, accessory mount uh, with a Yak Attack, uh, I think it's a eight inch uh, gear track. And that's where that sits and that's perfect. And that sits right where the handle goes, right over top of the handle. I don't hardly ever use the side handles anyway, so it doesn't get in the way and that's perfect. And what I like about the double header is that when I don't have the live scope uh, on the boat, this is where my paddle goes because nine times out of ten when i'm not using the live scope i'm fishing super shallow in grass and that kind of stuff and i want to be able to get to my paddle quickly because nine times out of ten i'm not even using my motor so that's how that all sets up all right let's run around the other side and finish this crazy thing up all right so back here what do i want to start with let me see let's start right here this is the this is where i'm going to keep my motor battery most of the time this is a 60 amp hour it's perfect for a full day of tournament fishing but if i'm pre-fishing it's going to be 100 amp matter of fact when i'm pre-fishing back here will be mounted a torquedo 1103 with a couple of torquedo batteries on here maxing out the weight of this kayak and making it kind of unstable but <laughs> that's pre-fishing but when i'm not pre-fishing i have a rudder sitting on the back and what the, what i did is i've got the one objective torquedo mount um and hold on let me look at my notes tell you exactly it is the non-actuated torpedo mount to make sure i got that right and what it does uh, is uh, it just get, makes it to where it's easy to take off and remove a torpedo so when i don't have the torpedo mounted on the back i have a rudder and the reason is is that i like to be able to set my my uh, xi3 on straight set it on about oh 40 50 percent and i like to run the bank and make as many casts as i can as i'm covering the bank and using the rudder with the, with the pedal steer and stuff like that allows me to steer the boat while the motor motor straight while I'm still casting and I'm getting a lot more casting during the day. And so I just made a little bracket that mounts onto the torpedo mount and it easily comes off and goes on and it's just a really, really simple thing. And I'm pretty sure one objective, because I did send them the, the measurements and everything for this, they'll end up making one shortly. And then I have the power pole mi micro anchor. This thing is six years old. I've never had an issue with it, knock on wood, never had an issue with it. Um, absolutely love it and I use it when I'm fishing, you know, shallow water. Typically it's not on when I have my, my live scope on um, just because I'm not, don't need to anchor down anywhere. I anchor with the, the pinpoint on the XI3 when I'm offshore. So nine times out of 10, 
when I'm using the, the pinpoint and I'm offshore, there's no reason to have a micro anchor, but if you're in Florida or in shallow lakes and stuff like that, it is a must. It allows you to be able to fish really fast and really efficiently to have that on there. Okay, and then there is my VisiCarbon Pro. This is required by KBF. It's a, it's a signaling flag is what it is, and I chose to put the American flag on there, uh, Hua. And then uh, the, uh, the light is an LED light. You screw it in to, to turn it on, you unscrew it to turn it off. Um, it runs all day long if you need to because I'm really good at forgetting to turn it off. And I get home and I throw it in the box and I realize that it's still on. But it mounts onto a, a Mighty Mount base. And this is something I use all over the boat. I use it for my camera mounts and stuff like that. And I've used it for years. It's just a Mighty Mount base, just a small little Yak Attack mount. And, uh, and that's it. Well, let me see if I'm forgetting something. I don't think I am. I covered everything on this kayak. Um, and like I said, it is a little much. It is a very over-rigged kayak, but it has got the best of everything that I know how to use and that uh, gives me the best opportunity to be able to find fish and go out and catch them. Just got to catch them. Sometimes I can't, but that's tournament fishing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. One more thing, before I get a rash, Let's take that thing off. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to put it on the ground though. Yeah, I just I had to get that hat off. Uh, it was it's that that's enough. <laughs> I, I I paid my dues, but it was fun to film with Edwin. Uh, I'll leave the link down in the description to his to his channel. Uh, it won't be the last time we filmed together. I enjoyed hanging out with him and his family and and all that this last October. But uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave leave them down in the in the comments. Uh, I'd be more than glad to help you uh, figure out your own rigging, uh, rigging issues. And, and, and that's all that kayak rigging is. It's, it's solving problems. And like I said, my biggest recommendation is do things one at a time. Don't try to rig it all at once and put things where you want them, not where they are because I like them there. So but like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out of the water. Go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.